Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about a randomized algorithm to test whether a given number is prime or not. So suppose you are given a, a number n and you're curious whether the number n is prime. Earlier, we talked about an algorithm to test whether n is prime or not. Um, that was more of a deterministic algorithm, uh, but the complexity was uh, very um, large, meaning um, it was about um, the square root of uh, n complexity, okay, which is not that good. Uh, if n is a, a very, very large number, say n is 2 power uh, 2048, then square root of n is about 2 power 1024, which is a large number, okay. So we cannot try that many attempts uh, to decide whether a number is prime or not. In cryptography, we deal with very, very large numbers. So we need a much more efficient algorithm, okay? Indeed, there was a, a recent breakthrough. Uh, when I say recent, it was like 15 years ago, almost. Um, there was a polynomial time algorithm to test whether a number is prime or not. That was more of a deterministic algorithm, okay? Um, but in practice, oftentimes we use randomized algorithms. So I will start focusing on randomized algorithm that will um, test whether a number n is prime or not. It will uh, give correct answer if the number n is composite, meaning if you feed in a composite number, you, uh, you can be confident that the algorithm will say that's a composite, okay? But on the other hand, if the algorithm says, yeah, the n is a prime, you cannot be 100% confident, okay? It will be close to 100% yeah, if you configure it correctly, uh, that the number is prime. So it's mostly like a, a likely prime. Uh, that's basically the way to visualize this. Uh, imagine this algorithms, okay? Randomized algorithms are algorithms that are applying randomness to decide uh, some property, okay? With that background, uh, let's think about uh, how we can make use of all the facts that we learned so far. Uh, we learned an important theorem. Suppose you have a group G, okay? What did we learn about this? Suppose you are given a group G and a group element um, G, okay, small g. Uh, we learned that G power, the order of the group is one. We learned this and we also proved it earlier. Suppose now we instantiate this for scenario where the number of elements in the group is uh, just one below a prime number, for example, uh, the group G to be say Z star 13, okay? We know 13 is a prime number, right? Uh, what can we say about the theorem here? Uh, we can say this, that, um, let me go here and plug it. If we take any element G in this group Z star 13, Z power 12 will be one, okay? Remember Z star 13 means all elements from one through 12, inclusive of 12, therefore, there are 12 elements, so we can uh, plug in here to the both theorem and we can confirm that G power 12 is one, okay? So in general, if you are dealing with a prime number, n, if n is a prime number for a moment, um, Z star n will have how many elements in the group? n minus one elements, right? And if we go and apply this, this uh, theorem, okay? Which means any group element you take, right? And, and raise it to um, the number of elements in the group is n minus one, right? Is equal to one in this group. So to sum up, if we know n is prime, okay? Then we know g power n minus one is equal to one in that group, okay? This is called the Euler Fermat, Fermat Euler uh, in, uh, um, theorem, okay? But it's applicable also for any general group G, okay? Finite group. So now let's think about this property that I mentioned. If we know n is prime, we can be sure that g power n minus one is equal to one. And now we can use logic, okay? Logic, for example, um, if it rains, you will bring Amarla, okay? You didn't bring Amarla. So what does it tell you? It tells you it didn't rain. So we can apply the same concept here. If, it, if n is prime, g power n minus one will be one, okay? What if g power n minus one is not equal to one? That means your n cannot be prime, okay? So we can use this fact to decide whether n is prime or not. So I'm going to show to you an algorithm now uh, that will leverage this theorem, the reverse of this theorem, okay? Be careful. Um, you cannot tell that uh, if g power n minus one is one, n has to be prime. So here is the algorithm. It's called is prime 
Fermat Euler. It checks whether a number n, uh, here n capital N denotes any number, it need not be prime, it, it can be composite as well. It's going to test whether n is prime or not by, by making t atoms. Okay, all right. Um, so the algorithm proceeds as follows. It randomly selects, uh, this is the Python random number generation um, function. It will give you an object called random gen, okay? And um, you are basically selecting a random element from the group uh, between the elements one through n, exclusive of n, okay? And we check whether um, is a power n minus one in mod n, right, is not equal to one, okay? If it is not equal to one, you, we know for sure it cannot be a prime. That's because of the way that I just explained to you the theorem. If number n is prime, we can be sure a power n minus one uh, is congruent to one mod n. So if a power n minus one is not congruent to one mod n, then the number n cannot be a prime number, okay? And the number a is a witness for us, okay? All right, suppose let's assume um, this is false. In that case, we, we don't know, meaning if this value is one, we don't know yet. So we continue uh, t times, after that we give up and then say, yeah, the number is likely to be a prime because we didn't find a witness that will satisfy uh, this, this property. Okay. All right. That's basically the idea of Fermat Euler theorem. From numutils, I will import uh, things we need. Suppose we, we know, for example, 77 is a composite number 11 into 7, 77. Say we try 10 times, okay, 10 atoms. I'll explain to you how do you know how many atoms to try, but I will explain that later. But at this point, just just take it easy. Okay. So obviously the program say it's false because 77 is a composite number. Let's try seven. Seven is a, a prime number, so it says true. Okay, let's try something bigger. Okay, I'm going to uh, take a, a large number from RSA uh, numbers online, uh, from the RSA Wikipedia, for example, and um, I'm going to try a very large number. Okay, I'll just start from RSA of um, 330 bits, okay? just to start with, and then um, we can see, okay, so is prime, I'm going to only make 10 atoms. Actually, as a matter of fact, even if you make one atom, it should be good enough for large numbers. That's amazing. Okay, it says it's not a, a prime number because I chosen an RSA public key, which is a composite number, okay? Now let me show uh, choose uh, an even more larger number, okay? And now let's try is prime uh, Fermat Euler. Okay, uh, just make only one atom. That should be good enough for large numbers. It's it's clearly not a prime number because it's a composite number. Okay, um, I, I have selected from the RSA website, uh, Wikipedia site. All right, so what you're seeing here is a very nice algorithm, very quick, easy to test, uh, but uh, there are some interesting uh, points to be explained. Okay, what is the likelihood that it will, it will report a composite number as a prime? That I will show to you.